Hi everyone, it's your boy yo 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 here, Mr. Anthony Fantano, the internet's busiest music nerd. And uh, it's time for a review of the new Father John Misty album, Pure Comedy. Singer-songwriter Josh Tillman, aka Father John Misty, aka Farmer John Misery, aka Papa John Lunch Me, aka Feather Jam Ministries, aka Fucking Jerk Missed Me, aka Faster Juan Whiskey, aka Fava Bean Pepsi. He is on his third full-length album under this moniker. He has released a myriad of albums under the J. Tillman name uh, years ago. Pure Comedy over here follows Josh Tillman's second Father John Misty album, the excellently lovey-dovey I Love You Honey Bear. Bush. That record is a beautiful record of self-dissection, of affection, of commitment. It's an album that is as smart as it is moving. Here, Josh Tillman, I think, really honed his talents for writing these grand musical gestures uh, that are laced with these very blunt, sharp, witty pieces of lyrical satire. So blunt, in fact, that his sense of humor has a, a bit of a grim tone to it. You know, it's kind of like um, uh, getting hit with a baseball bat on fire wrapped in barbed wire. That, that's a bar. And it's that wit, it's that satire, it's that drive to sort of critique the world at large that had me pretty excited to listen to this new album over here. Because judging from everything I heard from this record up to this album, uh, it seemed like Josh was just going to be doing that on a much bigger scale. To the point where he's kind of getting down to the nitty gritty of what's ailing the human race itself. Uh, whether it be politically, socially, philosophically, religiously. Now, just the length alone of this record, I would say, makes it a grander statement on these issues. Uh, I mean, this thing is 80 minutes long. And I would say on this record that Tillman's statements are generally bolder, stronger, more pointed. He really kind of gives off this attitude of, um, not given a fuck. At least not about who his opinions alienate or what bridges he may be burning uh, with a track like Leaving LA. A ruthless 13 minute takedown of the entertainment industry. Here's just one verse from that which I thought was sort of brutal. And even on the, this very track, Tillman doesn't escape from his own criticisms. Recognizing the fact that he's become this cliche of the uh, uh, super self-serious white singer-songwriter who's going to preach to the listener about, you know, what, what's so shitty about the world that they live in. And for sure, there are moments on this record where Tillman plays the role of the verbose, sad, sobering folkster or piano man, uh, but there are moments where he plays with that role too, kind of lampooning it a little bit, or at least being self-aware enough to comment on uh, his status and his abilities as a singer-songwriter, and dissect his image as far as a public figure, too. One of my favorite tracks on this record, Ballad of the Dying Man, a song that's essentially about somebody who's so in love with his own ideas and opinions that when he's on his deathbed, when he's at the threshold of, of passing away, his number one worry is, who's going to critique, critique all, all the homophobes, homophobes and one percenters and hipsters? hipsters? The guy is even portrayed as like checking his news feed before he passes on so that he sees what he's uh, about to miss. And I can see this track as Tillman kind of lighting an effort of himself on fire a little bit, but simultaneously taking shots at people who are uh, culture writers in the internet age and, you know, take themselves a little too seriously. This record brings my favorite kind of negative viewpoint of the world. It's uh, the sort of pessimism that while it acknowledges that, that everything around it is shitty, it just can't help but laugh at it. You know, let's just make a joke out of mankind's endless cycle of uh, self-inflicted wounds. And while deep down Josh most likely wishes he had the fix for a lot of the problems that he's singing about on this record, I think he's just as content to be, you know, riding the A-bomb that ends all of our lives, whipping a cowboy hat in the air like Major Kong and Dr. Strangelove. Some of the issues Josh sings about on this record seem like, duh, why, why are we still dealing with this? Others seem a little more inherent, at least according to him. That pretty much seems to be the concept of the title track on this thing itself. Uh, Josh sees these issues of mankind prevailing uh, right at the very start of our lives, uh, through the birthing process in this opening verse. Whoa, turns out nature's design has some flaws. Josh, I think, also explores human nature a little bit on the track When the God of Love Returns, There Will Be Hell to Pay, uh, sort of portraying, I think, what looks like this uh, rapture 
esque scenario where God comes back and is disgusted by the world we've uh, sort of created for ourselves. But then that criticism, that judgment is thrown right back in the face of that God. Like, well, you know, you left us with this really unjust world. Like, what did you, you think, think was, was going to happen, happen, bro? Also, one of my favorite lines on the entire record turns up on this track, too, uh, where... <laughs> Josh refers to human beings as uh, Earth's most soulful predator. And there are moments on this record where we're, we're very much in the past, very much at the root of what he sees as mankind's problems. Uh, other moments he's pushing things toward the future, like on Total Entertainment Forever, where he gives us this scenario where mankind's obsession with keeping itself entertained uh, puts us in a world where, you know, where, where, where having sex with Taylor Swift through virtual reality. It's this Matrix-like world where it doesn't really matter. Everybody's kind of plugged into the same thing, rich or poor. The channels are all the same. There are tons of celebratory pianos and horns all over this track that make it really peppy, uh, grandiose, and beautiful. In fact, the instrumentation sounds so pretty, it's almost a sales pitch for this soul-sapped dystopia that Josh Tillman has spun out. Sort of like, uh, you know, a good piece of sci-fi. Also kind of the case on the track, things it would have been helpful to know before the revolution, where we get this image of a society that seems to have overthrown the government, overthrown the, the world of industry too, and now we've kind of gone back to this hunter-gatherer sort of economy uh, in, in this uh, post-apocalyptic Mad Maxian kind of world. Tillman tries to escape the world's problems, though, on the song Birdie, or at least kind of portray this bird as, as a form of escapism because this bird sort of flies through the sky high above and far away from us trying to perfectly engineer our world, our societies. And Tillman portrays it as impossible perfection too, a scenario where it seems like the, the cure is even worse than the cancer itself. I get a sense of escapism off of the track A Bigger Paper Bag too, where it seems like Tillman is using alcohol, drugs, and ego to kind of shield himself or build up his status, build up his image, build up his self-worth, but then pairs this with some really self-dissecting refrains of what a fraud, what a con. This could also be a critique being lobbed at him by his own audience or kind of the, uh, the music writer public. Pretty much everything Josh touches and talks about on this record, he goes through very methodically, very thoroughly, really thinks about what he wants to say, and then says a lot about it. Uh, however, this a uh, really fantastic quality about the album does falter a bit toward the end on tracks like uh, Smoochie, for example. A song that sounds like it's about his wife encouraging him through these really dark, depressive spells, which you, you would have to figure a guy like Josh would, would go through, given that he is so concerned and I guess so aware of uh, just how shit the world is, but he doesn't really give these potentially intense throes of depression much more than a lyrical footnote on this record. It's not really something that he goes into with the depth that he does many other things on this album. Uh, same for the track Two Wildly Different Perspectives. Uh, while I do appreciate the uh, observation that, yes, uh, politically and socially, things do seem really polarized right now. Uh, Josh's observations here are not much more than surface level. He does go pretty deep into the topic of age, though, on the track Growing Old on Magic Mountain, a grand ballad about what seems like a man's last night of raising hell and living without regrets and just kind of burning the barn down. This guy is watching his youth slip away, but he's trying to take advantage of this last moment he has with it. The track eventually builds up to this very droney, heavy, epic instrumental climax that I like a lot. It gives the album a, a real sense, 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 sense of finality. It feels like a grand finish for the record, but this is not the end of the album. Uh, if anything, this is kind of like maybe the, the finish or the credits rolling or something, because the last, last track in 20 years or so is like a bit of an epilogue. And essentially this track comes down to one simple statement, that th this doesn't matter, it's not really gonna matter in a few decades, it doesn't matter in the grand scheme of things of the universe, because really all we are is a speck on a speck on a speck, which, you know, I get that, that's fine with me. 
All the more reason to say, fuck it, bring on the Taylor Swift Oculus Rifts, bitch. As far as the production and the sound, the instrumentation on this thing, it's immaculate. It's very well recorded. It's very well mixed, just like the last album. Uh, you know, th there's obviously still kind of an instrumental, a sonic similarity here between what Josh Tillman is doing uh, on this Father John Misty record and like maybe the last Fleet Foxes album. It's very, it's very airy. It's very open. It's very pretty. Josh brings a lot of different sounds on this thing, whether it be some lavishly arranged piano ballads that are very tender, very refined, some exciting, fiery, passionate piano rock some acoustic ballads, uh, a track or two that has more of a gospel tone, a couple that take on more of a country tone, the weird distorted experimental vocals on the track, the memo, which is one of the most conceptual of the entire album, especially as you're getting like the weird sort of talking background vocals, kind of adding this very funny tongue-in-cheek context uh, with these little stupid vapid statements uh, behind what Josh Tillman is trying to say uh, in his music. It's sort of like, hey, you know, I'm here trying to make this statement here and tell you guys something, but uh, people who are listening to the record don't really get it. They're just fucking morons. Or at least that's what I took away from it. Uh, other spots where there are heavy instrumental interludes that are just, again, really grand, really reaching, just Oh, so ambitious and powerful. This thing is so dramatic, it's so theatrical, it's so intimate, it's so well thought out a lot of the time too. Then there's what is just the personality of the album, and there's a lot of that. This album is immensely funny, immensely depressing, it's heartfelt, it's sincere, but also has incredible moments of cynicism too. It's the soundtrack to the world going to hell in Handbasket, and that's great because honestly, like, it sounds so good, I don't really mind. I'm gonna say I'm feeling a Light to Decent 9 album, and leave it at that. Thank you for watching. Transition! Have you given this album a listen? Did you love it? Did you hate it? What would you rate it? You're the best, you're the best. What should I review next? Hit the like if you like. Please subscribe, and please don't cry. Just leave an angry comment in the comments if you're angry. I'll catch you guys in the next video. Other videos that I think you should check out, links next to my head, subscribe to the channel, official website, Father John Misty, pure comedy, forever.